What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you five CRPGs that I consider to be easy, which may or may not be in quotation marks in the title, I haven't decided yet. But right out of the gate, a few things to actually mention there. First of all, something being easy or difficult is a very subjective thing, especially when we start talking about the actual difficulty modes of individual games. So, with that said, there's a reason that the title says easy and not beginner. As some of these games, I wouldn't really recommend to a beginner. In several cases on this list, actually, the challenge of the game is more about learning the system than it is the actual challenge of, say, combat. Because these particular games, once you learn the system, the combat itself becomes a bit of a cakewalk. Which tends to be the case for CRPGs in particular, because these types of games tend to utilize what I call a knowledge gap rather than a skill gap. So this isn't exactly a third-person shooter where your reflexes and things are, you know, a thing. More often than not, especially when it comes to the turn-based CRPGs, it's really more about knowing what to do in a system that is usually quite complex. But nonetheless, these particular games we're about to talk about are games that I found fairly easy once you learn that system. And in some cases, that is synonymous with a game that's great for beginners, and in other cases, eh, not so much. But first and foremost on our list, we have Wasteland 3. I loved Wasteland 3, but it is quite easy. This is largely down to the fact that its system is relatively tame and fairly standard as far as turn-based tactical games go. Combine that with a few, not exactly exploits, but things you can take advantage of in the early game, and you can be way over-leveled very, very quickly. Meaning that even on the highest difficulty, it's very possible to quickly, like within a couple hours, get to a point where your entire team is just one-shotting the enemy team or stun-locking them, and they don't have a chance to respond to you. Now, on the flip side of that, if you don't know what you're doing in Wasteland 3, it's very possible for the enemy to do that exact thing to you. But seeing as most people probably play on normal, this game just shouldn't be very difficult, to be honest with you. It's a cover system. There are ways to eliminate enemies before you even get into combat. You can hit them with a sort of surprise round, if you will. There are just so many ways to dominate the field that in a lot of cases, the enemy just doesn't get a chance to do anything, especially when you start looking for ways to actually capitalize on that knowledge. It just becomes very simple. Even on Supreme Jerk, which is the highest difficulty, it is very possible to one-shot the very last boss. Now, because of all this stuff, Wasteland 3 actually is a pretty good CRPG for beginners. The system's relatively tame. It's a fun game overall. But obviously, more than anything, just across the board, one of the easier CRPGs I've played, period. Now, number two on our list, we have Divinity Original Sin 2. Now, this one I have seen people comment about being actually pretty difficult but this is definitely one of those titles where once you learn the system, it's a cakewalk. The thing is that Divinity Original Sin 2 uses its own unique system that is actually even different from Divinity Original Sin 1, though the core concepts are the same, but they changed quite a bit. And once you kind of learn those things, it just gets very, very easy. Combine that with the sort of freedom of approach that Divinity Original Sin gives you, and you have fights where you can get Death Fog at the very beginning of the game and then use it to one-shot a boss. You can build ridiculous overpowered characters that can just one-shot a boss. And as soon as the very beginning of the game almost, you can actually just respect your character freely, which means you can tailor your characters for each individual fight that you are going into. Now, a lot of this was done to kind of make sure there wasn't a proper fail state outside of just dying in combat. The design philosophy being that, you know, no matter what you do, there's a way forward. And because of that, at the same time, though, it kind of makes the game pretty easy. Again, provided you know what you're doing. Now, if you just jump straight into the deep end on Tactician, you're probably going to die quite a bit because you don't know what you're doing in combat. But Original Sin 2 is not really a balanced combat system. Some skills are just straight up better than other ones. For instance, one of the best skills in the game is actually Chicken Claw, which sounds ridiculous, but it lets you turn an enemy into a chicken for two turns. You can get it right at the start of the game, you can put it on almost any character because it's very accessible, and it is the strongest stun in the game. So once you start knowing things like that, again, the whole game just turns into a cakewalk. Very fun game, very kind of approachable. This is definitely a CRPG with kind of mass appeal. It doesn't have quite the nuanced layers of systems you'll see in other CRPGs, but that nonetheless brings 
brings us to our third title, and I bet by this point on the list you might be thinking, oh, he's just going to rattle off a bunch of new CRPGs. Well, you'd be mistaken, because I'm actually throwing Baldur's Gate 1 on this list. And I know some people are probably listening to this right now, like, how could you possibly think that Baldur's Gate 1 is easy? You haven't been paying attention up to this point then. Once you learn the system, Baldur's Gate 1 is a joke. Baldur's Gate 1 is one of those games people think is difficult because it's so old, no one really plays that edition of D&D regularly anymore, let alone its sort of interpretation into a video game. But once you learn it, it is so easy especially when you start looking at some of the classes that are very overpowered. In some cases, classes actually get stronger as the difficulty goes up because of the way the difficulty handles summoned entities. So a class that can summon will actually get stronger as the difficulty goes up because your summons are subject to the same scaling that the enemies get, which means on higher difficulties, if you can find like a wand of monster summoning, congratulations, you basically won already. But no, ultimately the challenge of BG1 is hands down just the obscure nature of the system these days. I'm sure a lot of my more seasoned TTRPG players are like, what are you talking about? I love AD&D. But reality is it was a clunky system that has kind of, you know, been put to the wayside these days. And because of that clunky nature, a lot of people, you know, don't want to return to it and learn it, which is why I made that whole beginner's guide for Baldur's Gate 1. But no, it's actually a very simple game once you get into it. Baldur's Gate 2 is a little more advanced just because there's more magic going on. You get higher level spells. Spells, which means you need to know how to dispel enemies and strip away their protections to actually hit them. So it's a little more complicated overall when it comes to BG2, but BG1 doesn't really have a lot of that, and it is quite simple as a result. But that brings us to number four on our list, and this is actually Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire, which is actually an interesting one to include in a list like this, because PoE 2 was kind of seen as being so easy that the developers decided to do something about it, and as a result, we have uh, Magrin's Fires, which are special challenges you can enable at the start of a game, and there's actually a challenge called the Ultimate, where you turn every single one of those challenges on and then play through the game solo. Only like a dozen or so, I think it is, people have actually completed this. It is insanely difficult, and as someone who 100%s games, I freely admit it is well beyond me. But Magrin's Fires are meant to be like an ultra challenge, like they're not really included in the base game. When you're just looking at the base game, if you will, without turning these challenges on or intentionally making it harder for yourself, the game is actually super easy. And this is really down to the AI editor. This particular game allows you to customize the AI of individual companions, which is a pretty cool system overall. But this allows you to kind of completely remove any sort of micromanagement required. And before a battle even starts, you can set up like the perfect responses to things. And once you get this part down and you run through the game once, it gets even easier due to a thing called Bareth's Blessings. As you complete achievements in Deadfire, you get uh, blessing points. And this will allow you to give yourself buffs upon starting a new campaign. And you can start the hardest difficulty of this campaign with those buffs on, meaning that you can give yourself an outrageously strong start. The AI editor has saves and stuff, so you can actually bring those edited AIs straight into the new game. And you can actually even find some online about like how to set up each individual companion for it. So you can go in with outrageous buffs, characters that are built to go from the start, more or less, and kind of just walk through the game. And again, the base game of Pillars of Eternity 2 is very, very easy once you kind of learn what you're doing. But like most of the other games on this list, it uses its own system and learning that system and thus how to set up the AI to react to certain situations is most of the challenge. But once you figure that out, the game is a joke. Unless, of course, you're trying the ultimate, which is insane. So kind of a weird dichotomy of very easy to very hard there. But that brings us to our last title on the list, just a nice simple one, and that is Shadowrun Returns. This game tends to play almost more like an expanded demo for the later Shadowrun games. It's very linear, it's very short. The game itself would likely not take you more than 10 hours to beat. And because of that, the combat and the encounters and everything are just very simple. And if you build a character that is even slightly good at combat, you will wipe the floor with enemies. But nonetheless, Shadowrun Returns is a pretty cool experience. I actually recommend it to just about anybody. If you like sort of modern day meets high fantasy, then it's kind of up your alley. Pretty cool stuff, but a very, very easy title. 
And that, of course, brings us to the end of the video. I certainly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of all of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.